Hey, good day to you. This is Stan Prochowski with Prochowski Estate Law, and this is the Ask Stan Show every Thursday at 12 noon, where I answer all your estate planning questions submitted throughout the week. If you have a question about wills, trusts, Medicaid pre-planning, Medicaid crisis planning, the nursing home, or just estate planning in general, just send them to me here on Facebook or call me at 363-7222 or email me at prochowskiestatelaw at gmail.com. I'll answer them live on WKSR Radio, and we post them here on the Ask Stan Show every Thursday. So, let's get right to it. Stan Prochowski, only of the way, act correction, correction, the Tammy Prochowski, only of the week. She decided to take charge and uh, pick the song for you this morning. But the one you had was a good one. We'll use it next week if you right. want okay, to. Okay, we'll use that one next week. Sounds right. like that is a good one. All right, let's get right into his program today, and here's Stan Prochowski. Yeah. Hey, well, listen, we got our seminar uh, in uh, Lawrenceburg today uh, over at WLX, uh, sister station over the back of the building over there at the Country Cafe. Uh, if you want to sign up for that, we still got some seats left, not too many. We've got a pretty good crowd on that, but we're doing it twice today. Once at 1 o'clock, and then we're going to do it again at 6. Uh, just call and talk to Miss Alex or Miss Tammy and let them know we're coming so we have a head count so we can get everybody spread out and uh, some light refreshments. So, uh, you know, it's called Wills, Trust, and the Nursing Home, and that's what we're going to talk about. And one of the things we might talk about at the seminar a little bit tonight, but I want to talk about on the show today, and that is, you know, we do a lot of trust, and we do a lot of trust plans because trust to avoid probate. Well, you know, it's kind of a, a little bit of legalese, and I'm, you know, but I want to go over some issues that we see a lot, and that is when people have trust, that, you know, especially ones who were written back in the 90s, uh, uh, people have a trust, and when something happens to them, they bring, their heirs bring the trust to me and say, hey, mom and dad had this trust, what do we do? We get to looking at them, and more often than not, we find the trust are what they call not funded. And, um, you know, basically, uh, they have a trust, but it's really kind of like, like, not, like nothing in it. So, you know, what does, what does, what do I mean when I say, when I say funding? Well, the term funding sounds to me like there's some cost involved, is it? Well, you know, that, I think that's a bit, a uh, common misconception. Uh, I don't like the name funding because it does sound like something you've got to shell out some money for, but funding doesn't cost a, a penny. It doesn't cost a penny. What funding really means is you simply are moving property that's not in the trust <coughs> into the trust. Now, I want to talk about that, that term, into the trust. You hear it a lot. You hear people say, I got, my land is in my trust. And my, you know, this is my house. <coughs> it's in my trust. <coughs> well, it's sort of a, a, a misnomer, but that's the common street vernacular way to, to say it. You don't really put anything in a trust. The trust is a, a, a kind of a legal fiction. It's a, an entity. It doesn't really own property. But what, what it means is we vest property with the trustee. So when, I, when you put property into a trust, you know, like if you look at a deed, you look at it, my deed says, you know, Stan Pachowski on the, on the grand tour. So I, uh, the grantee, I mean, I own, I own the property. But when I put it into my trust, I, I draft a new deed and I convey it to Stan Pachowski, trustee of the Pachowski Living Trust. So it, it, that's what we mean when we say in the trust. We've taken the property out of my individual name and placed it into my capacity as the trustee, which still really doesn't change a thing when it comes to my land because you know, when I owned it, I could do anything I want with it. And now that it's in the trust, as the trustee, I'm the only one that can deal with it. So I can still do anything I want with it. Nothing has really changed. So, um, and the, the big advantage of the funding is that the funding is what causes us to avoid probate. Because uh, one of the basic definitions I talk about in all my seminars, and we will today as well, that uh, anything you pass away with is just titled in your individual name. Like if I pass away with my farm title to Stan Prochowski, it has to go through probate just by legal definition because there's no way for it to get to my heirs unless we go to probate, create the legal fiction of the estate of Stan Prochowski, put somebody in my shoes that can convey. It. So uh, now in a trust, if I put if I vest it with the trustee and put it in the name of my trust, then it's complete probate avoidance because it's no longer in my individual name. It's now in my trust and I control it as the trustee, and you know the. The real big underlying concept here is when you when you have property in your name and you have to go through probate, our probate code controls how property gets distributed. And that's a court process. And it's involved. You've heard me talk about it before. But when you put it into the trust, now there's a legal shift in the fundamentals. And now the property is going to be distributed under our trust code, which is a whole different uh, 
scheme of law that does not involve court process or involvement. It just moves on uh, smoothly like that. So, you know, so especially real estate, which I use, you know, for a good example. Stan, I always hear you talk about your stuff, like all your belongings, for example. How does that get put into a trust? Okay, stuff. I, I sort of coined the phrase, your stuff. You know? <laughs> <laughs> your stuff. You know, and that's just your property, what you own, your personal property. When I talk about personal property, I'm not talking about your real estate. Uh, I'm talking about untitled property. Uh, your pots, your pans, your tables, your chairs, your, you know, uh, that sort of thing. It, it's a property that you own by virtue of your possession of it. Okay? Now, what we do when we do trusts is we do a simple assignment of personal property, which assigns everything you own by virtue of possession into the trust. And that means that is all your stuff. I mean, it is your pots and your pans and your tables and chairs. I mean, it's everything including the change that's stuck down between the cushions of the couch. Everything that you, you own uh, puts us this, puts this in, into the trust. Um, you know, vest it with you as a trustee. So uh, that's the that's the personal property. Real property is all the land and uh, everything personally attached to it. Then you, there's other, you know, and we do that for you. I, when you do a trust with me, I'll do all the deeds for you. So I'll fund the trust with your real property. Then I'll do the assignment of personal property. And so I fund the trust with all everything you own by virtue of possession. Now there's some other personal property out there that is personal property, but I can't put it in for you because there's another party involved, and that's usually in the form of a financial institution like a bank. So you have a checking account or a, a savings account or CD accounts. I can't put that in there because we got to, you know, you got to contract with the bank. So we go to you go to the bank and you simply say, "Hey, I did one of Mr. Stan's trusts. So I want to put my bank account in the trust." They'll know exactly what to do, and now your bank account instead of being the, the name on the account, Stan Perchowski, the name on the account is going to be just like that deed, Stan Perchowski, trustee of the Perchowski Living Trust. And now my bank account's in there. Balance doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's $5 or $5 million. Uh, the vehicle is now in the trust. Um, the other thing is uh, investment accounts. You know, these are things like uh, Edward Jones or Raymond James. Same thing. They just have an account number. We just changed the name, the name of it. Well, most folks have some <coughs> sort of IRA or perhaps a 401k plan, how do those get transferred into a trust? Excellent question, because that's, what, that's the one area where we do things ever so slightly different, and that is we don't mess with ownership on those. Let's think about it. If you have an IRA, the key, the key letter there is I, stands for individual, right? And if you, if you change, the, change it from Stan Pachowski to the Stan Pachowski Living Trust, that could be interpreted as me taking all the funds out of it in one year because I changed the name of it. So, you know, that triggered those, uh, those big penalties that you hear about. So but we, we don't want to do that. But we, those are beneficiary-driven instruments like life insurance, uh, retirement accounts. What we do there is we simply go in and change the beneficiary to the trust. You know, or typically for IRAs and retirement accounts, we'll make the primary beneficiary your spouse if you have one, and the secondary the trust. The bottom line is it, all, everything ends up in the trust. If it's beneficiary driven, well, it ends up in the trust, but it gets there at death. The other stuff we put in at the time we put the trust together. But the bottom line is it all ends up in the trust where it needs to be for proper distribution um, uh, afterward. So that's the funding thing. And I just want to make, I want to make it clear that uh, what we see is people get these trusts and they get no follow-up. They say, okay, congratulations, you have a trust. And people just don't understand that they have to fund it. To take it home, put it on the shelf, and it doesn't get done. That's why I do as much as I can for you that I can do, you know, with just your signature. I don't need to get the bank involved. We do as much as we can. But we go further than that. We make sure every trust gets funded. Uh, Alex in my office is, is our funding coordinator. And she will follow up with you, and she's relentless about that. And she will constantly call and say, how's the funding going? And if your answer is... Well, you know, it's spring and I was out in the garden. I didn't quite get to it. And she's going to call you again in a couple of weeks. And, and, and we're just going to literally pester you until you get it in because that's what makes it work. And that's what gives us the probate avoidance that we want. And the, the bottom line is it's really simple. It can be done very quickly with a minimal effort on the, the individual's part. And I will guide you through the step and the process every step of the way. I'll show you exactly what you need to have, what you need to show the bank. If I need to talk to the bank, I will. If I need to go to the bank. I'll do it. It's all part of the deal. So that's the funding. It's very important. Uh, we don't overlook it. You know, in my opinion, if you have a trust and don't help people fund it, it's probably borderline malpractice, and I don't do that. So at Pachowski Estate Law, Pachowski Elder Law, we, we do, that's all we do is estate planning and elder law. We do it every day. We do it all day. And uh, we're having our seminar today in Lawrenceburg. 
Um, but uh, also having another one here in Pulaski uh, at the Star Theater next Thursday, which is the 13th. And again, we do it at 1 o'clock and we do it at 6 o'clock. So call my office, get on the list. Uh, it's, it's pretty popular. People are ready to get out and ready to hear about this stuff. So uh, over there in the southeast side of the square, the uh, number is 363-7222. If you want to come over to Orangeburg and try to squeeze that one in, I've got a couple of seats left. Call us and let us know. Uh, and we'll take care of it. What was time is that one in Marksburg again today? Uh, again, first one's at 1 p.m., second one is at 6 p.m. All right, sir. very good. Stan Pachowski, thank you, sir. Here with us every Thursday morning at 8.30, and I hope you have a good seminar today and next Thursday here in Pulaski. Have another. Okay, and the next Thursday over the week, I'm, I'm, I'm exercising my right of election now, and I'll be picking that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you so much. Okay. Good to have you. You too. Alex, thank you for being with us this morning as well. More coming up. Kelly Hamlin.